All right, so I decided to wear a suit in this video because why the hell not? <laughs> Anyways, battery life on Android can become a consistent battle once the phone starts to age. And even battery saver mode can't always fix the problem. Fortunately, with the plethora of options available within the settings and other apps, several changes can be made to stretch your battery stamina. Let's go over them. First, we need to get to the root of the problem and figure out what's actually consuming your battery every day. Now, the simplest way that I'm sure most of us are aware of is to go into the battery usage section of the system settings. It'll load up a dashboard that shows you what apps and services have been consuming your battery the most within a certain time span. Usually it's within 24 hours. From there, you can tap on each app and it'll give you the option to force stop it, uninstall it, or just restrict it, meaning that the app will be very limited when it's in the background and will usually get closed after a few minutes of inactivity. It just might affect the app's functions and delay notifications for that app. But a more powerful way to discover what apps and services are currently running on your phone is through a menu called Running Services within the developer options. Unlike the battery usage menu, this will be more specific in showing you what processes are running on your phone in real time. Doesn't even matter if it's a system process that needs to run. Plus, it'll show you how much RAM is being used from all those things constantly running. From there, you can tap on a process or app to stop it from running. The only ones that you can't stop are the processes that are needed for your OS to run. By the way, if you're not sure how to unlock the developer options, check the description for those step-by-step -step instructions. Now, if you're still experiencing huge battery drain and believe that the settings aren't catching everything, you can instead turn to some excellent battery monitoring apps. Two of my favorites are AccuBattery and GSAM Battery Monitor. Both are fantastic at giving you extra information about your battery usage, like letting you know how long your phone has gone into a deep sleep, seeing the exact rate at which the battery is discharging, which apps are consuming the most juice, and which ones discharge the phone the fastest even if they're not used the longest. Plus, there's a lot more of information you can dig through. AccuBattery just takes it a step further by also showing you the health of your battery so that you can better determine if you need to change it. Apple has something similar within its software, and I'm really jealous of that because native Android, most Androids don't support this. And that could be the main reason why your phone is draining so quickly. Just make sure to charge the phone a few times when you first install AccuBattery because it needs to collect battery data before it can show you the actual battery wear. On top of that, AccuBattery just presents everything in a better fashion and explains certain topics in detail so that you understand what's going on. I'd say GSAM is just a much better option for actually seeing what apps or services are consuming your battery, especially if you have root access. For example, it can show you which apps consume the most battery just while they're in the background, how many wake locks have occurred, which sensors are using the power, network data, and a lot more. The only problem is that the app hasn't been updated in over a year, and it doesn't seem to be working on newer OS versions like Android 13. But if you can't get it to work on your older phone, it's a gold mine. What can work on most phones though are these AR glasses from Enreal, the sponsor of this video. If you played with AR, you know how annoying it is to wear those overly sized headsets. That's until now. I partnered up with Enreal because they managed to bring down AR to some stylish, fashionable glasses so that whenever you go in public, no one will know that you're actually catching a movie, browsing the web, or even playing a video game. They call it Enreal Air, and it can mirror your smartphone screen to a bigger 201 inch widescreen experience. It's like going to the movies and watching it in IMAX, but you can be anywhere you like. Plus it works on Android, iPhones, iPads, or even the M1 chip MacBook laptop. That way you can get a full AR desktop experience. It's the first of its kind. You just need to get the Enreal adapter and Apple's Lightning to Digital AB adapter if you're trying to have it work on any Apple device. Here's the best part though. Within the Nebula app, you can mirror up to three windows side by side to expand your workflow and make it easier to multitask. Pretty awesome. So no matter if you're wanting to watch YouTube, start gaming, or browse multiple websites simultaneously, Enreal's Air AR glasses have got you covered. It's like taking an iMac screen in your pocket wherever you go. I'll drop that link at the top of the description. Anyways, I hope those previous tips helped you get to the root of your battery problem, but why not take it a step further by toggling a few things within the settings? First off, search for adaptive battery and make sure this toggle is enabled. It should be by default, but you never know. 
It's a feature by Google that learns how you use your phone and then it limits the apps that you don't use often. It's a universal toggle, but you can manually control this for certain apps by long pressing their icon, tapping the little I, battery, and then changing their battery usage restriction. Now besides apps, the display is the main culprit for your constant battery drain, especially if you have a big display that gets bright as hell like the S22 Ultra. So there are a few things you can do to slow down the drainage. First off, if your phone has the option to lower the resolution to 1080p, do it. This will be a huge battery saver and you probably won't even notice the difference. If your display supports a higher refresh rate, that also uses a lot of battery. So switching back to 60 Hertz will help a lot. And reducing the screen timeout duration to something like a minute or two will definitely help just in case you have a bad tendency of having your phone on whenever you're not using it. If you have an OLED panel, another thing you should do is enable the dark mode. OLED screens simply turn off certain pixels to create that deep black color, saving a lot of juice. And when you start using apps in dark mode, you're also saving your eyes from getting blinded at night. I would also recommend using a dark wallpaper. I just dropped a few on my Patreon, which I think look phenomenal, and I dropped some Halloween inspired ones as well. Or you can also download ones from AMOLED walls or AMOLED papers from the Play Store, and you'll find hundreds of amazing black wallpapers that are completely dark while still carrying a few amazing color designs. Also, there are still many apps that don't support a dark mode like Amazon, Google Opinion Rewards, PayPal, etc. But you can force them to become dark. There's a secret setting within the developer options called Override Force Dark, and this will force a dark interface throughout most of those apps that don't have a dark theme. It doesn't always work and it can make the app look weird, but when it does work, it's a lifesaver. The only problem is that it's a universal toggle, so you can't pick and choose which apps get a dark mode and which ones don't. So instead, you can turn to an app called Dark with a Q at the end. It'll let you select the apps to have Force Dark enabled. But to get it to work, you'll need to have root or use the Shizuku service to enable it on your non-rooted device. On another note, most modern smartphones these days are capable of connecting to 5G mobile networks. However, most people don't live in a range of a high-speed 5G network, so there's no reason to have your phone constantly scanning for a network that isn't there. So just turn off 5G and set your phone's preference for 4G slash LTE to save some battery life. This option is usually found within the mobile network settings. And even if you're in an area with 5G, it still might be a good idea to turn it off and then turn it back on when you actually need it like when you're wanting to download a huge file or play an online game when you're out and about. Otherwise, for basic things like streaming music, browsing the web, or loading up emails, 4G slash LTE can work just fine. Plus, the same can be said for many of the options found within the quick tiles of your notification shade or even the settings. Things like Bluetooth, the always on display, nearby device scanning, hotspot, NFC, nearby share, and GPS. These are all things that aren't necessary to have constantly running. And when you do need them, you can turn them back on for that moment. Finally, always make sure to stay on top of your phone system updates and app updates, because there could be bugs in the software that may be causing battery drain. It's rare, but it's happened in the past, and I'm not talking about years ago. It's still occurring to this day. Plus, it's just a good idea, especially for security. Most OEMs release monthly security updates to patch certain leaks and bugs within the software. So this may be the solution to your battery issue. And if your phone has stopped receiving updates because it's really old, then maybe flash a custom ROM. I know it's easier said than done, but there's a good amount of tutorials online and it could be a lifesaver. Of course, this should be the last resort though. Even after modifying all those settings, installing those extra apps, and making sure your software is up to date, flashing a custom ROM or even obtaining root could be a viable option. When you root, you can flash a custom kernel that prides itself on saving battery. Some of them do things like disabling certain wake locks, configuring the types of cores a process can use, lower the refresh rate, and more. Or you can instead underclock the kernel, including the one that's on your phone already, with an app called Franco Kernel Manager. I often lower the power by 25% since most of the stuff I do on my phone isn't super power intensive anyway. I don't even notice a change in performance unless I start doing something heavy or extreme, like playing heavy 3D graphic games. But like I said, rooting should be your last choice because a lot of things can go wrong if you don't know what you're doing, especially when messing with the device's kernel. So just make sure you do your research before jumping the gate on this one. 
In the end, whether you're using an older phone with a smaller 2000 milliamp hour battery or a newer, bigger phone with a 5000 milliamp hour capacity, these great tips can help you get the most juice out of your tank. So if you found this video to be helpful, help me out by tapping that thumbs up. It really will help out the channel and get this video recommended to others. If you guys have any more battery saving tips that I didn't mention in this video, be sure to let us know about it in the comments. Also, why not get subscribed with the notification bell turned on so that you don't miss out on any other great videos like this one. Either way, thanks for sticking to the end and I'll catch you in the next one. Kapow!